the uh, the, the, the the night of the altercation, him and um his sister had got into it, and she called me crying. So when she called me, I was like, put him on the phone, cause like previous to this, you know, we might have had one of two um, you know disagreements but never you know never nothing crazy never nothing disrespectful never out of pocket you know what i mean nothing where you would think it's anything so i guess when she put him on the phone i was like yo what's popping like yo what's good what's popping with you what's going on and his disposition was more or less on some what like you don't even live here no more because by then i had moved out i was living in harlem oh you moved out yeah so um you know, his disposition was just like on some real other shit. Like, you don't even live here no more. You can't tell me nothing about my sister. And I'm like, all right, but yo, like, she, I think she needed money for juice, for the milk, for the girls, like some stupid shit. And like, you know, and I'm like, yo, give us some money for some milk so I ain't got to come uptown. I'm in Harlem. Like, so I ain't got to come all the way to Throg's Neck for no 10 feet. I'm going to spend more money in the fucking cab. And he was like, on some, nah, I'm not giving a shit. And I was like, all right, well, give her the money you owe me. You know, like now my shit is changing. Like I'm going from what's going on, like y'all want some silly shit to like, all right, well, give her the bread you owe me. And he was on some, like, I'm not giving you nothing. I'm not giving her nothing. You dead. Like everything is dub. Like I don't, he had just came home from jail. He was going through something. Um... And then, like in the in the papers and shit, like on TV, they had said CDs and shit. He had a bunch of CDs. I think when I moved out, we was doing like a housewarming. He was, I think, locked up. So when we was doing a housewarming, I was like, "Yo, I need some of these CDs for the party." My baby mother's like, "All right, take them, but just bring them back, cause you know how he is about his CDs. Like he was a collector." So I was like, "Cool." And I would have told him if he was home, and he would have gave him to me. Like, it wasn't like that. It was like maybe 7 AC. It wasn't nothing retarded. You know what I mean? So I guess that's where the, all the CD shit came from. But when me and him was talking, like, he never mentioned no CDs. That's why when all that shit came out, I'm like, that shit wasn't about no CDs or nothing like that. But anyway, we going back and forth, and at some point, he told me to suck his dick, and I was like, all right, well, you know, keep that energy. I'm going to come up there. Okay, and there's something about New Yorkers and the term, suck my dick. Because, <laughs> for example, I interviewed Fat Joe recently. Like, this was like uh, six months ago. And he said, I'm going to be honest with you. If somebody told me suck my dick right now in, in this hallway or something like that, I would stab him up or something right now. Like, I'm just being honest with you. I would really, really hurt this those guy. Those words are that serious to you? Yeah, those are serious to any real nigga. Like, that's like the, that's, this. I don't know. That's, you might as well just put a death threat or something right in the card. I'm going to kill you or something. This is multimillionaire Fat Joe with kids and a family and a career. And he would still risk his freedom over the term suck my dick. What is it about suck my dick? that is so over the top for someone like yourself at the top? I mean, for me, it was, I just recall my older brother when I was younger, just telling me, yo, you don't let nobody invite you to their dick. And that's that. Like he never said no more, but he said that. And he said it in a way when I was young, that probably was more, a little more stern than what he said most things. Cause I knew that was a no, no. So you're arguing with him over the phone, and he says, suck my dick. <laughs> but you're uptown right now. You're in Harlem, yeah, and they're in, and they're in the Bronx. They're in Throgs Neck. I'm on 34th and 8th. How did that phone call end? Um, He says, suck my dick. I'm not giving you nothing. You can suck my dick. And I was like, keep that energy when I get up there. So you're at your house in Harlem and you get off the phone. What are the next steps that happened then? Um, I was sick. I think one of my men's had just came and took my car, I called him. Boom. Yo, come get me. He like he probably was going to free go off with the chick or something. So he like, Well, come on, man, I just left type shit. I'm like, bro, come get me, homie. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm telling my man, come get me. Um, He comes and gets me. We ride out. Well, you go and grab your gun first. Okay. Why do you, did you decide to take your gun with you as you're going to see your baby mother's brother? I was tight. Like, we was beefing on the phone. Like, we, like, at, by, at some point, it got crazy. And then with him telling me to suck his dick and all that, like, I was like, I was going up there to pop him. That's what I told my man in the car. Like, yo, my man was like, I'm going to fuck the nigga up. Hold me down. Because, you know, like, we go on today projects. Hold me down. Don't let nobody jump me. I'm like, I'm going to pop this nigga. He like, nah, you don't got to do it. Listen, I told my man what I was going to do. Straight up and down. Like, I told him what I was going to do. Like, you don't, like, a lot of it was we lived together. Like, we never dealt with, we never played disrespect. Like, we never done that. But this is your baby mother's brother. Right. That's my, and that's the principle of it. This is the, not, this is like, not just some random stranger. Yo, you Vlad, don't know like, who they it, are. Right? When you did 12 years and you look back, big picture, like, I look yeah. at the principle, like, some people look at, but the principles, nigga said suck his dick. But the principle, too, is that was your baby mother's brother, bro. Right. You Which know is what I'm more saying? important than than it any, any been, words. It should have been right. Um, also, like with her calling me, like I don't think she called me thinking this nigga's gonna come up here and kill my brother. You know what I'm saying? I don't think she thought that. You know what I'm saying? So of course the principles of the situation, it, 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 the principles be fucked up. But at the same time, it's like you gotta honor somebody that got those morals and principles because when it stands in your favor, when it's not like in one of these stupid situations, you'll respect it. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, everybody will say, oh, you see something, say something. You see a woman getting raped. Yeah, I'm a helper. If the nigga turn around and shoot me, they're going to, he should have minded his business. Like motherfuckers is just like that. Yeah. That's how I, it's going to be. I understand. So, so here you are in the car with your gun on you, your legal gun on you, ready to kill... I mean, I don't know that I was ready to kill. I was ready to shoot. You're ready to shoot. And killing happens when you shoot. So. Exactly. Consciously, I was definitely ready to shoot. Subconsciously, right. I probably was ready to kill. And and your man is actually going along with this and driving you to the location. Even but though he's he, trying to- He's to... driving like, yo, I'm going to fuck this nigga up. Like, that's what he's saying. He's talking the same time I'm talking. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not really talking. I'm just like, listen, I said it once what I was going to do, and I wasn't really saying nothing. I was just like waiting to get up there. Okay. So he takes you to the Bronx. Yeah. Do you go to the apartment first, or do you go Yeah, the I street? went to the apartment first, and he wasn't in there. Okay. I just remember like being in the crazy rage, because like- I think The apartment I, was all fucked up, right? Yeah. When I got there, my mom's was there. She was downstairs, her, my baby mother, the kids, everybody was downstairs outside. So they like, they trying to call me down. They like trying to call me down. They telling my man, they trying to get my man, like get him. But my man is like, he really can't get me. Like, I got the gun, like, <laughs> the fuck? Um, I go in the apartment, the apartment is like ramshack. Like homie done ramshack the apartment. So I'm like, now I really get mad cause I'm like, the shit fucked up. And I'm like, he going? I'm like, oh, he was popping all this shit. He going, like, I don't know what happened. But when that apartment led, yo, like something happened to me, bro. Like something happened. Like I just blacked out. I blacked out. Like I, like I just went into a rage. Like word. Oh, this nigga told me something. And he not here. Like the audacity of like I don't like I bugged out, bro. I black. I blank. Okay. So you left the apartment. Left the apartment. Cut through the projects. Cause if you know Throg's neck, do we have is the strip with the little store. Like it's one. You know, at night there's one store where everybody hang out at on the app. So I'm going to the Ave. When I get to the Ave, I see him. Um, get to the Ave, I see him. When I see him, he's talking to a man in the car. Man's the car's double parked in front of the store. The man's in the driver's seat. He's outside talking to the man in the driver's seat. When I see him, I call him. When he turn around. I back out. I'm like, yo, what up? And I back out. He like, what, nigga? Like, like I'm supposed to be scared type shit. So when you see him, you pull out your gun. When I see him, I call him. 
You call them first. When you say backed out, what does that mean exactly? I, when I see him, I call him. Yeah. When I call him, he turns around. That's when I backed out, pulls out the, the gun. Got it. I back out. He says some hot shit like, like what? Like, nigga. So I'm like. I mean, do you think that at the time, if he was like, oh, okay, hey, oh, okay, never mind. Like, I have no clue. Like, you, I don't know. You were just in a I was, I was black. Like, he might have, it might have been, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. But he's basically. But him doing that definitely didn't help the situation. Right. So he's escalating it as well. He's saying, I don't care that you have a gun. He definitely was on it like that. And at that moment, I think that's when I just started hitting And you, I guess you empty the clip. I don't know. I know I hit him. Multiple times. Yeah. Because, I, you know, I guess in the documentary you said how you saw he was, he had like a, a, a fluffy jacket on and like you could see the feathers or, or whatever. So you shoot him multiple times and your man is right there with you or no? He's right there with me. Okay. So you guys run. Do you know that you killed him or no idea? I just know I shot him. You shot him. And my man, we in the car, my man's driving like, yo, you bugging. Like, yo, you dumbed out. Like, you dumbed out. You bugging, you bugging. And I remember getting rid of the gun on my way back downtown. Um, I think we were somewhere on the east side. We went to the east side. I was in my man's barber shop. And that's when we got the call that like he had died. Who called you? Joey. My man Joey Kane, rest in peace. Um, Joey was one of my brother's mans. He was a little older than me from back in the days who baby moms was from Throg's Neck, so he used to hustle up there. But he was actually from the Polo Grounds. But he was like a, a, a big brother to me too. Um, so he knew him, and then like I said, my moms and my baby mother was out there when the shit happened. So like all of them, everybody went to the hospital. So he was there and allegedly, um, from what he had told me, when the police got to the hospital, they was questioning my baby mother and she was lying to them. Like she was straight up and down. Like, like it wasn't, it was, I think she said it was two white guys in a white truck or some crazy shit. Like, and, um, the person who was in the driver's seat, who he was talking to, was at the hospital. His car had got shot up a little bit, but he wasn't hit or nothing. But when she said that, as story has it, he was like, nah, Vic, you know that was your baby father that did that. As Soon as he said that, the D's, and man, let me, we need to talk to you. And so from that night, I knew he was dead. I knew who was telling on me, all of that. Like, I knew all of that. 